All right guys, welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm gonna be doing another tying video. I'm gonna show you guys how to tie my plevas. So we're gonna go ahead and tie that here in just a moment. But first, I just wanna give a huge thanks to all of my subscribers. We finally hit the 1,000 subscriber mark, so that's a big milestone for me and the channel in general. And uh, so because we hit that 1,000 subscriber mark, we're gonna be doing a giveaway. In the giveaway, I'm gonna be giving away one of my Brownsylvania shirts as well as some sort of fly fishing gear. I still gotta figure out what I'm gonna give away. Um, but as soon as I get that all together, I will post a video here on YouTube and also announce that on Instagram, just giving you guys the details for the giveaway. And again, thanks to all my subscribers and everyone who has supported me up until this point. And uh, just pretty excited to see what happens with the channel from here and just continue to make videos for you guys. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get into tying this fly. I'm going to show you the materials first, and then we'll go ahead and get to tying it. To start things off for thread, we're going to be using Vivas ADOT, and the color code for this thread is E14. The ribbing of this fly is made from Globrite floss in fluorescent green. The tail is made from light cock de Leon, but any color will do. For the wing case, any brand of black nail polish will do the trick. The hook that I use here in this video is a size 14 Orient Sun 5241, but I like to tie this fly in size 16 as well. And last but not least, the bead is a 3.3 millimeter tungsten slotted bead in copper. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into tying this fly. To start things off, we're going to put our hook in the vise here upside down, then you can just get your bead and pop that on the hook point, and then just take it out and rotate it around and secure it in and get ready for tying. This just makes putting the bead on the hook a little bit easier. At this point, if you haven't done so already, you'll wanna go ahead and get your thread ready on your bobbin. Once you have your bobbin ready, you can go ahead and start your thread here behind the bead and then just start working your way backwards and then come in with your scissors and cut off the excess thread. Once you have the excess cut off, you can go ahead and work the rest of your thread back to the bend in the hook and we'll get ready to tie in the tail. Go ahead and grab your Cock de Leon feather and you can take off about five to six fibers, but this part's really preference. You can use however many fibers you prefer. Next, we're gonna go ahead and secure the Cock de Leon to the hook shank with a pinch wrap, and then just make a few light wraps. And then you can come in and adjust the length of the tail fibers. Once the tail is of your preferred length, you can make tight touching wraps all the way up to behind the bead. And then you can come in with the scissors and cut off the excess fibers. Once the tail is tied in, you're gonna grab your Globrite floss. For this fly, I'm just gonna use a short strand, but if you're tying multiple flies, you can cut off a longer strand. And then you're just gonna secure that here behind the bead and then just pull the excess through and then start working your thread back to the bend in the hook. Once you make it back to the bend in the hook, use your thread to create a tapered body on the fly. After finishing the tapered body, go ahead and take your Globrite floss and give it a few twists and then start wrapping it up the fly, making open spiral wraps. Once you have the Globrite floss behind the bead, Go ahead and take your tying thread and make a few wraps to secure it. And then you can come in with your tying scissors and cut off the excess. After cutting off the excess, I like to use my tying thread to cover up that tag end with just a few more wraps. Now you can grab your whip finishing tool and do a three or four term whip finish and then cut off your thread. And this will complete the tying portion of this fly. For the wing case, you're going to use the nail polish and create a bubble right where the slot is on the bead. You'll want to make the bubble a little bit bigger than what you think because as it dries, it actually gets smaller. And if you're tying multiple of this pattern, at this point, once you put the bubble of nail polish on, you can move on to the next fly so that by the time you're done with all of the flies, this part is dry. After letting the nail polish dry, it's time to UV coat the fly. This adds durability and magnifies the ribbing and the wing case, giving the fly that extra pop. Once you've evenly coated the fly with the UV resin, you can go ahead and get your UV light and cure it, and then the fly is complete. While this fly isn't one of my top producers, it's definitely one that has saved the day multiple times. It's one of those weird flies where you just use on a day where nothing else is working, and it gets the job done. 
That's going to be it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already to see more videos like this in the future. Go ahead and smash the like button. It lets me know that you guys like these fly tying videos and want to see more of them. And leave a comment below to let me know what you guys think of this pattern or if you use it yourself. And until next time, peace.